The majority of licensed medical physicians practicing medicine in the US today are MDs, also known as medical doctors. However, there is also an increasing number of practicing physicians known as DOs, which means doctors of osteopathic medicine. Both are equally licensed to practice medicine in all 50 states. I wanna make one point very clear before we start. One degree is not better than the other. In fact, they have so many similarities, it would probably take an hour to cover them. This video is gonna focus only on the differences between an MD and a DO. The most evident difference between the two is that DOs practice something called OMT, which is osteopathic manipulative therapy. Instead of just telling you, I'd much rather show you. Come on. Osteopathic manipulation is a hands-on therapeutic tool whereby manipulating the body's own tissues can restore and maintain optimal function. And it's a low risk conservative measure that can be used in place of medication and surgery. And it treats all types of ailments, everything from low back pain to something more complex like congestive heart failure. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. <laughs> How's that feel? Really good. In osteopathic medical school, there's a heavy emphasis placed on the holistic medical approach. Now, what does that mean? It means an extra focus on the body's own ability to heal itself, a focus on prevention, and a focus on the whole patient instead of just the disease process. Just because there's a heavier emphasis placed on this holistic model in osteopathic school, it doesn't mean that MDs don't practice with this model as well. There are plenty of MDs who treat with the whole patient philosophy in mind. Those first two differences were just differences in medical school training. Now let's move on to residency, which is arguably the most important part of medical training. In order for a residency program to be considered legitimate, it needs to be authorized by an accreditation council. And currently there are two accreditation councils, one for MDs and one for DOs. DOs can train under either accreditation council. However, MDs can only train under the MD banner. Come 2020, those two accreditation councils will merge and allow residents to train under a unified council. Further strengthening my point that there are becoming less and less differences between the two degrees. Now, how about practicing internationally? Well here, MDs have a distinct advantage as they're able to practice medicine in more countries than DOs. Currently, about 50 countries allow full medical licensing for US trained DOs, with more countries allowing restricted practicing as well. This restriction stems from the confusion created by European trained osteopaths who aren't medical doctors, but are only trained in manipulation of the musculoskeletal system. However, the AOA has been making great strides in educating foreign governments about US trained osteopathic doctors. Now, what about the applicants? To get into an MD or DO program is extremely competitive with the number of applicants and score requirements rising each year. It's important to note that DO schools do accept the non-traditional medical school applicant, those who are going into medicine as their second career or perhaps later in life or don't have a scientific background. Also, the GPA MCAT combo required for admission is slightly lower for DO schools, but that gap is closing each year. Interestingly, because there are less DO schools, despite the lower requirements, it's still more competitive to get into a DO school. A couple more differences. There's a nine to one ratio of MDs to DOs out there, with about 100,000 DOs in active practice. And two, a higher percentage of DOs go into primary care specialties like family medicine, OBGYN, or pediatrics. Me personally, I chose the DO route because I'm a fan of treating the patient as a whole and the prevention aspect. Plus, it never hurts to have a hands-on tool like OMT. Bottom line is, when you're picking your doctor, you should focus less on their degree and more on their communication skills, knowledge, bedside manner, and experience.